into uh, our area where we can work with the different actions, or we can just click on walk. GDevelop pops up this little panel for us, and then we can just change this to idle. It's very cool. So now this is saying, when the player is not moving, set the animation player to idle. So now let's click the preview button. So now when our character walks, you see the walk animation, but when a character is not walking, you see the idle animation, which is exactly what we want. So we still have work because when I'm pushing to the right, we want the character to turn to the right. The character is not doing that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this and we're going to get ready to set up uh, to have this uh, player do what we want it to do. Okay, so how do we get this character to turn, you know, the way it's supposed to be facing when we, we press uh, an arrow key? What we're going to do is we're going to go to Add Condition. We're going to left click. We're going to look for a keyboard. We're going to left click there. We're going to scroll down to Key Pressed. We're going to left click. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to hold Shift to type in capital L. And then I'm going to type in EFT. Now, I... I uh, typed that in. However, you didn't necessarily have to type that in. Uh, you could have went through the keys and found left yourself. And you can see left because I typed in here, GDevelop's like, oh, is this what you want? However, I already typed it in. So I just want you to be aware you didn't have to, you could have selected from the, the list. So now with that done, I'm just clicking here to get that menu to go away. I'm going to select, okay. And uh, okay, so with this selected, now what we want to do, so basically remember we say, you know, what? This is when something happens, do something. So we're gonna click here, we're gonna go to Sprite, we're gonna go to Effects, and what we wanna do is go to this flip the object horizontally. So we're gonna left click there, and uh, we're gonna select Player. And then we have this Activate Flipping, we're gonna select No. Then we're gonna click OK. Now we need to basically have this done again. So what we're going to do is use GDevelop's ability, GDevelop's ability to just copy and paste. We're going to copy. Remember, we're not copying to this add condition directly underneath. We're going to another sub-event. You can tell from these separated uh, blue boxes here. I'm going to right-click and select Paste. Uh, so now this left, I'm just going to left-click there. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to put in capital R. This is important. And uh, now with that, and I could also select here to get right, or I could have selected through the, the list. So now this says, when the right click, right key is pressed, do something. So what we're going to do is click here. So I left click. Now I have right clicked. I'm selecting copy. Hovering right over add action. Right clicking and selecting paste. So now this says flip player. This is fine, except we want this to be yes. So we're going to left click here. And then we're going to select Activate Flipping. We're going to select Yes. Okay, so with this set up, these two conditions as well as these two actions, when we preview, let's see what happens. So now when we push to the right and we push to the left, our character does as it should. So now when I press the Jump key, our character still doesn't go into its jump animation. So let's set that up. Okay, so what we want to do is for this jump, we don't want this, when we set up this jump, we don't want this to be a sub-event. You can tell what's an event because it's all the way out, almost to the end. In the sub-events, you can tell because they're indented away from this event. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top, and we're going to click near the bottom. So we have this add condition. So to, left, to the right of that, we're clicking. See how this blue line is right along the bottom of this uh, event? Because that blue line is there, now when we click this event, we'll have a another you know event right here. Not you know. Try not to say you know. A lot of times there's tutorials sometimes that frustrate me a lot because people are describing things and they're like, you know, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, what we want to do is we want to click add condition. We're going to scroll down to platform behavior and then we're going to scroll down more. We're going to select is jumping. And our focus is the players. We're going to click there. We're then going to click OK. 
Okay, we could click Add Action and go through and you know get our set animation and all that, but why do that when we have this here? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna right click. So I left click first, made this gray, selected Copy, I did it just to make sure, it makes me feel good seeing this is gray. I copied this action. Now I'm going to hover over right over the words add action. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select paste. And I did that just so I could easily have this. And now I can click here and I can just type in this. And when I say this, I mean in between those two uh, quotations. Type jump. So basically what's going on is we're telling GDevelop when our player is jumping, do this. So I'll set the animation of the player to jump. So now when we click play, a preview button make sure everything still works and when we jump now we see that our character is going into its jump animation remember we didn't have that jump set for loop uh, in case you know something's off this isn't set for for loop so our character is uh walking and jumping and going back to its idol which is excellent Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to give our character the ability to fire. So I'm going to click back on where we see this game one. So I want to tell you something right now. When our character fires, we don't have a cool animation set up where you see the character, you know, lift up its arm and position its arm to have the fire come out or something like that. You're going to see the animations that we have right now in the bullets are going to be coming from the character. Uh, just want to prepare you for that, but... The way this is going to be set up, our character will fire in whichever direction that it is pointing in as it's walking around. It also fire while it's jumping up and down. Okay, so I had said before in GDevelop, we don't always have to go out of GDevelop to bring something in. So what we're going to do is we're going to look to this objects panel. We're going to click this plus button here. We're then going to look towards sprite. We're going to left click here and we're going to click in this uh, section for ob object name we're gonna put in a uh, bullet and then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this plus button to the right and we are going to click on edit with Piscal. so now we have our graphic editor built into G develop again and uh, currently our color is set for black, that's fine. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on this circle tool and we're just gonna drag this circle tool out. And then what we're gonna do is click this color, we'll click a bluish color. I'm just gonna click here to get that to go away. I'm gonna go to the paint bucket and then select in the uh, center of this just to fill that. And uh, we're going to name this bullet. Again, the name of the actual image isn't so important. Now we're going to select Save to G Develop. And we have our bullet right here. Then we're going to left click on Apply. Okay, so with this bullet, we now have something to actually shoot. So we're going to left click on our game events. And uh, we're going to set things up so we can actually shoot that bullet out. So I'm clicking here just so that I know when I go to make a new event, it the new event is going to be an actual event, not a sub-event. So I'm going to left-click right here so we have now this new event. And then with this, we're going to select Add Condition. We're going to click on our keyboard. We're going to scroll down to Key Pressed. And then we are going to select... We could go through this list and find N. However, we can just put in a lowercase N, okay? A lowercase N, or it can be whatever key that you, you want it to be. I'm just choosing N, since it's towards like the center of my keyboard. A lot of times I'll use N, M. So I'm gonna click OK. So now we have this set up, so we're saying you know, when N key is pressed, do something. And uh, what we want to do is we're going to click Add Action. We're going to go to Common Action for All Objects. We're going to left-click there. We're going to left-click on Objects. And then we're going to select Create an Object. We're going to select Bullet. And now we have this uh, 
bullet about to be made. However, we want this to go to a specific point. So for now, we're going to click OK, just so we have this set up. Now, this isn't done. What we need to do is go to Game 1, and uh, we're going to double click on our player. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. We're going to look to where we see Edit Points. Okay, in this Edit Points, right now, scroll up. See this right here? This is our origin point right here. And that origin point corresponds to what you see right here. Now, if I scroll down more, you see this point, And this is our center point. point. What we want to do is add another point. And to do that, we're going to look to this plus button to the right. We're going to left click here. And uh, we're going to name this fire point. So we just have fire, capital P, O, I, N, T. Now we, to make it easy to see our point, normally I click here and I just put in uh, 115 and then 35. And there's no particular reason to use those numbers. They just, they uh, tend to work well for seeing my point. So here's the new point right here. So we can drag this point down. See the point right there? Hopefully you can see that. Kind of difficult to see. So we're going to drag this point down. Now this point is where our bullet's going to come from. So again, we're not going to have some cool pose uh, with the bullet shooting out. So we're just going to put this towards the front of our robot and the bullet should come from this general area here. So now that we have this fire point set right there, we're going to left click on close and then we're going to select apply.